In March's AILA Interview of the Month, U.S. citizen Angelica Avila shares how living in Maricopa County, Arizona under 287G impacted her and how fear for her undocumented parents shaped her life. What was it like to live under 287G with undocumented parents? It was difficult because it was to a point where we couldn't go out to the city lakes, we couldn't go to the park because the fear overwhelmed us. It was just the fact that um, with the simple tail light that wasn't working, with the simple turn that my dad didn't signal, it was the fear of us being pulled over and um, having my parents taken away. And it was just so scary knowing that, okay, well, you know, we're gonna go to the city, we're gonna go to the park, we're gonna go to the lake, but we might go back home alone. At the beginning of the day, my parents would wake up. I could see that look on their face of um, worry that they had because even if my school was five minutes away from my house, it was always that, um, that fear of being stopped by law enforcement and having um, to go through that pain of being separated. Tell us about the decision to move to Mexico and then back to the U.S. So my parents decided we had an encounter with law enforcement um, when I was about 11 years old when we were on our way to a lake. And um, it was just a fear that ran through our veins at that moment that it made my parents think about moving back to Mexico and um, eliminating the risk of our family being separated. So they went back and forth um, on deciding if it was the best option to move back. Um, when they finally decided, it was in 2010, so my siblings and I moved back with my dad. And um, we moved back, and it was a whole day's ride um, to get there, and um, I feel like I wasn't ready because I had lived my whole life in the United States. Um, it was a new culture to learn. I didn't know Spanish at a middle school level. Um, I didn't know how to write it, I didn't know how to read it, and when I got there, it was really difficult to adapt. Um, the kids would make jokes and they would bully me because I didn't understand what they were saying, I didn't understand how things work between kids my age there, so it was really difficult. I just really didn't feel like that was my home. I always felt that my home was here, where I was born and raised, where I was... Um, accustomed to, I knew how things worked here, so I just didn't feel that Mexico was my place to be. And then um, I moved back in April um, of 2015, and it was really difficult because I got a part-time job. I was going to school full-time. Um, I had to deal with a few medical issues that I had, and so um, I mean school and work and trying to get to work and the I didn't have the guidance of my parents. I didn't have them here to say good night. I didn't have them here to say I love you or give them a kiss on the cheek at night when I went to sleep. And um, the fact that I always woke up to an empty bedroom, it was so unusual to me. It was so strange because my whole life I had always shared a bedroom with my younger sister. Um, she's only one year younger than me, so um, I had become accustomed to her, seeing her every morning, sharing with her, you know, getting ready for school together, going to school together, and um, it was really difficult because I had to live without my family, and I've lived with them my whole life. Um, I took on adult responsibilities that I feel I shouldn't have at age 16. What is it like to have your family back in the U.S. now? I'm just scared that I'll get to that point where, um, you know, we can't travel long distances, where we want to, like, see it, the whole Arizona, but there's specific checkpoints when they're starting the raids. Um, I mean, that makes me feel, that makes my siblings feel as if we're not even safe in our own home. Thanks, Angelica, for joining us.